Hi everyone, so nothing's worse than being on the road and having something happen. And it can happen to each and every one of us, so you need to be prepared in the event that that ever happens. And keeping your medical records with you can assist medical professionals save your life or actually prevent any more serious illness while you're traveling. So make sure that you have your medical records with you, whether you're in your province, you're out of your province, or you're traveling abroad. Um, always keep those with you. It's much easier for medical professionals to diagnose or use your history as a starting point for investigation. So we hope you like this video. Um, we hope it saves a life. And um, if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please give us your feedback below whether this is good content and stuff that you're actually looking for so that we're aware of it and we can focus on the things that are most important to you. Um, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the little bell because as you know, with our health conditions, it totally depends on how we're feeling and how we're doing when we can actually release our next video. So it, it's more helpful to you if you enjoy this content. So there's basically many ways that you can actually bring your healthcare records with you no matter where you go. Um, one way is many pharmacies, doctor's offices, or chronic care clinics like a diabetes unit or a renal unit will actually have little medical record booklets that you can actually bring and they're, they're usually really tiny and they're quite easy to fill out. Um, the requested information is all printed out and you just fill it all out and you keep that with you no matter where you go. Um, for women it's easy to keep it in your purse, for men um, just somewhere easy to grab somewhere um, in your vehicle or wherever that may be. Um, now there's also other ways, for example, we, we just actually use just lined paper and <laughs> I have a five page document from birth all the way up to current um, specialists I've met with, surgeries I've had, and we're gonna go through the other things that you should include in there. Um, but basically, I keep this with me um, no matter where we are. Now, I don't just keep the hard copy with me, but we've also taken pictures of each of the pages and uploaded them to the cloud, and then we've emailed them to each other, so each of us has them in our email boxes so that we can access those in case of emergency. So for example, Eddie might not remember something or he might not recall a name um, and the same thing with me. I, I might not recall a, a medication that he's on or something and all of that stuff's recorded on there and we can easily access it and email it or Bluetooth print it or whatever the need is. Um, however, we can give that information to medical professionals to help diagnose and investigate anything that's going on with us, no matter where we are. Um, there's also paid for services, and they basically do a very similar thing. Um, they basically have 24 seven access for any medical professionals anywhere in the world, and they can call in and access your medical records, any current test information, any of that. Now, we just keep ours with us, um, or we keep copies of it somehow for medical professionals um, to access but you can also pay for it and then you're not needing to keep things or if you're worried about losing it um, but like I said we keep a hard copy we have also it uploaded to the cloud and we've also emailed it to each other so that chances are one of those is going to be present and able to be accessed in case of an emergency. So another piece of information that you always need to keep with you or have access to is knowing all your current medications and your dosages and also why those medications are being taken for because um, there's several medications out there um, that can be taken for alternate reasons other than the original reason that they may be prescribed to other people. So it actually may send a medical professional on the wrong route if you're taking the medication for another reason than what it may be normally prescribed for. So that's really important. Medication, why you're taking it, um, is always important. And I'm going to put the link down below to our other video um, that talks about um, being prepared for traveling um, and having all your medications and everything reviewed by your physician before you go as well as making sure that you have a proper supply of them before you go. Um, so I hope that's useful as a connection to everybody. 
So the information that we want to include um, is any chronic conditions that you may currently have. So if you have diabetes, um, you may potentially have blood vessel damage, which might be causing an, a particular issue that you're having. Um, or uh, with diabetes comes high cholesterol readings. So you might have a heart blockage or something else along that route. Um, you could have, if you've had cancer in the past, possibly could have metastasized along the route. Um, so that would be very important for health care providers to know that. Um, if you have any digestive issues, you could potentially be uh, experiencing a blockage or even a perforation um, somewhere along the system. So again, really important information for medical professionals to diagnose where you're at and at, use as a starting point to try to figure things out because many, many conditions can mimic the exact same criteria or symptoms. So another very important area to include is illnesses that you've had throughout your life. So for example, like a premature birth can actually have latent conditions. So um, you can have intestinal scarring uh, or scar tissue that can later on um, expose itself as a blockage in your intestines as an adult because of all the scar tissue that was there. So those are import very important things to remember. Um, it, there could be like infections like pneumonia or meningitis, again causing inflammation or scar tissue or something else in in the long run. Um, other childhood illnesses like chicken pox could mean that what you're experiencing now is a reaction or a side effect of shingles. <laughs> um, or if you've had polio in the past, maybe it's post polio syndrome that you're now experiencing. Another thing would be like recurrent childhood bronchitis could actually mean um, that you're having further breathing issues as an adult because of all the scar tissue, because of the bronchitis as a child. There would also be other things to note, like injuries, um, that you've had torn muscles or tendons or ligaments, you've had a scope of your knee in the past, um, improperly healed broken bones, or um, just previous breaks can cause arthritis, or if you've had any dislocations, um, you could have weakened joints in the area that you start having more and more issues as you're growing older. Um, another super important area is surgeries. So if you had a tonsillectomy as a child, it could indicate that you're experiencing an infection now as opposed to your tonsils being inflamed. Um, if you've had an appendectomy before, so your appendix was taken out, um, but you have pain in the same area that they would normally think it was an appendicitis. Uh, it could be an intestinal blockage or a kidney issue. So it, it allows them to rule out other things because you don't have those things to cause those issues. Um, a cholecystectomy, which basically your gallbladder has been taken out. So now your body doesn't have that extra storage of bile. So you could potentially have issues um, trying to digest proteins and fats so they can probably build up in your system and cause other issues that you might be experiencing. So that would be super important to any doctor. In line with that, there's also things like if you've had any surgeries that involved um, hardware or implants. So there could potentially be a recall on that hardware or a warning about that potential hardware that you have in you. Um, so for an example, there was a recall about cobalt um, hip hardware where they were actually starting to dissolve and giving you toxic cobalt levels in your bloodstream. Um, so them knowing that you have a cobalt implant would make them think, oh, cobalt po poisoning, how does that look like? Um, because all these things might not be on the tip of the tongue of, of the physician if they've never seen it. They might have read about it in a journal somewhere, but it, like I said before, many things mimic other things. So it, it, it really helps them to rule out some of those other things. Um, you could have breast implants um, because you had breast surgery surgery because of cancer or whatever it may be. Um, you could have a heart implant or pacemaker defibrillator um, which might have recalls or are malfunctioning or they've been installed so long ago that they might be at the time where they're starting to cause problems and might need a replacement. Um, also things like insulin pumps. So all of those things 
will lead to a proper diagnosis and lead them in the right direction rather than trying to spend time on other things that might have nothing to do with you whatsoever. So I kind of alluded to this next one. Um, any recent tests? Now, usually when you have a test for something, it's because something's going on in your body and your daughter, your doctor wants to investigate that. So basically, if you had an ultrasound um, because you have indigestion, it could indicate gallbladder issues. So you might have stones in your gallbladder and it might be to the point that those stones have grown so greatly that it needs to be removed. Um, you could have had an MRI um, showing a bulging disc and nerve suppression. Um, so your condition might have worsened and if you already had a bulging disc at that area, they now know what area they need to look at more closely and probably order another MRI with contrast or something. Um, if you've had a cyst discovered somewhere, they can actually look at that past thing, um, the past report, um, note when it was, and also see if it's grown significantly um, to indicate if it's cancerous, because um, cancer usually grows quicker than something benign. Apologize, sorry. Um, also, if you've had like a colonoscopy, so like some tests can actually cause damage. So if you've had a recent colonoscopy, you actually there is a possibility of perforation of the bowel or um, that you've weakened the area and now your body self perforated it or it's bulging or, or herniating in some way. Um, so all of that information is super important to anybody trying to figure something out that's going on with you. So immunizations is another huge area that's really important. So when you had them um, and which brand or type that you've actually had as well is super important. Some vaccines actually have live virus in them. So you could potentially get many symptoms of having that disease state. Um, another thing is like, because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you're necessarily protected. So you could quite easily have a measles, mump, and rubella shot and still get measles. You could quite easily get the pertussis vaccination and get whooping cough. So there are many vaccines um, that are not, they don't necessarily mean you're not gonna get that condition. So it's really important to note if you've had the vaccine so that they don't go and give you extra doses um, or for other reasons. Um, if you've had a chicken pox vaccine, for example, you could actually be now susceptible for um, getting shingles. So that might be causing your issues. Um, so again, they would need to know that you've had chicken pox or you've had the vaccine to figure out that you're now suffering from shingles. Um, there's also vaccine induced in illnesses. So there's heavy metal contaminants in, in vaccines, neurotoxins. Um, you could get brain inflammations from many of the vaccines or um, narcolepsy specifically has been linked to the H1N1 flu vaccine. Um, so there are things that you can get from vaccines. So if you've recently had a vaccine, it's really important to note all of that information. And if you have your whole vaccine history, it's really great for doctors to try to brainstorm like the chicken pox and now you're getting a further disease. Or if you had a polio vaccine um, or you suffered polio men meningitis and now you have post polio syndrome, um, they know how to deal with those conditions much more readily if they know that information. There's also other things like um, travel related diseases. So there's waterborne illnesses which could um, give you permanent liver damage. There's tick bites which could give you Lyme disease and not affect you for like a couple of years down the road. Um, there's typhoid fever. Um, which there's actually been outbreaks in the United States recently. So those are really important things if you've had those before. Those diseases typically create antibodies and they also create potential scar tissue and other things within your body that can make you susceptible for other things later on down the road. Um, and also, for many of those conditions, the treatments themselves might also cause other issues or put a strain on certain parts of your body that could cause other issues down the road. So I know I'm talking really fast. I have put this information in point form in the body of the video, um, but I just don't want our videos to be too long because people don't watch them when they're too long. I certainly don't watch super long videos. I can't sit there and watch them. Um, the next thing is hereditary information. Um, so 
things like autoimmune conditions or um, certain cancers. Um, for example, if your grandfather and your father had prostate cancer or if your great grandma and your grandma and your mom all had um, hysterectomies uh, in their 30s, um, that's important information to know. Um, cardiovascular disease also runs in families as well as diabetes and you could potentially even be a carrier for some conditions um, such as like thalassemia. So you might yourself not have the disease but your child could have the disease and if you're traveling with family that's an important thing to note. So if you know that you're carrying something make sure you let your children know and that your children put that as part of their health record that your your mom is a carrier for thalassemia or your dad is a carrier for thalassemia trait so that if you start having iron conditions or or um, other other related issues for that condition that you, the doctor would be able to have a starting point because it really would be a random chance that they would actually discover that quickly so it would really save a lot of time and could potentially save your life and save any further disability down the line if you let them know right away so the last area is allergies which I'm actually experiencing right in front of you um, all the wind today is blowing pollen around like crazy so I'm like losing my voice and everything um, so the first area is environmental allergies um, such as pollen or dust mites pets or animals um, if you've just moved into your van and you have your pet but you've always had your pet and you didn't realize you had an allergy to them it might not have been prevalent because you're in a much larger house and now that you're in smaller quarters now your body's reacting um, uh, str more strongly than it ever did before there's other things like mold and mildew um, as well as um, when you insulate certain things you might have some out like when you insulate you actually might be keeping more water in your unit that you're not even aware of and uh, it might be causing rust to your van body which is a concern but it can also be causing mold and mildew in certain areas that you don't know but your body knows that that mold and mildew is in the area and it's getting spores um, so if you've ever been sensitive to that before that would be really important to relay that um, also smoke so British Columbia and Alberta um, have had huge amounts of wildfires. Oregon and California, pretty much all of the West Coast has been experiencing like just incredible forest fires in the area, which is affecting like huge areas um, and causing all kinds of breathing issues and reactions environmentally because the, the air is just not providing the good things that it should and the smoke is actually causing inflammation in people's um, tracheas and, and their lungs. Um, so that would be another thing if you have any sensitivities that you know about. Um, chemicals. Chemicals can cause dermatitis and it can come from things that you've been using all along um, but that your body just gets to a point and it says that's enough. So it could be things like uh, fragrances, um, preservatives or antibacterial um, anything in any product so a lot of a, a lot of creams and moisturizers in makeup even have antibacterials in them it could be antibacterial soaps it can be just your dishwashing liquid has antibacterial chemicals in it so you can actually be allergic to all of those things so be sensitive to anything new that you're using and that would be important to relate to a healthcare professional um, like I said, hair, makeup, and even nail polish has things that people can be sensitive or allergic to. And sunscreens basically are in most cosmetics, moisturizers, or even lip balms, and they can cause problems. Um, I have sensitivities to them, so I have to really read labels and make sure that I get ones that don't have a sunscreen in them. And many, many people are allergic to latex or metals. So I, I can't even wear wedding my wedding rings anymore. Sorry, a tongue twister. Um, because I'm allergic to the gold. And I completely break out and I get this huge rash. So like I, I can't even physically wear them um, anymore. Um, and same thing with latex. Many, many people are allergic to latex. Well, 
in most hospitals, they used to use a lot of latex. Now they're trying to get away from that, but that if you're going somewhere else, they might not have done that yet. Or if you're in smaller places, they might not have replaced all of their things um, and are more uh, latex free friendly. Um, so just keep that in mind. Always report if you do have latex sensitivities. Then there's also things like medication allergies. Um, now there's a difference between adverse effects and an allergy. So an allergy will cause a rash or swelling in the face, tongue, lips, or throat. It could also cause um, breathing issues in a, in a person as opposed to like just a side effect of the medication that can cause all those other things. Um, so a pharmacist will usually ask, well, what happened when you took this medication? Um, so that they can clarify whether or not it was just a side effect to the medication itself or if it was an actual allergy to it so that you might you'll probably if you're allergic to that you'll be allergic to something very similar to it so they won't give that to you um, and the last part of allergies is of course food allergies which are completely out of control and everybody and their dog seems to have food allergies lately um, so but again with allergies and intolerances, there's a difference. So an intolerance means you have a problem digesting it. So you might be lactose intolerant, but that doesn't mean you're lactose allergic. If you're lactose allergic, if you have it, you could actually go into shock and die from it. If you're intolerant, that just means that it's uncomfortable and your stomach hurts and you might have diarrhea or whatever it may be, um, your symptoms for being lactose intolerant. Um, Basically, an allergy is an immune system response instead of a digestive response. Um, and that's about it. So make sure all of these things are listed in your record. They're all super important and they are the things that will help diagnose and get the doctor in, in the right direction sooner, which may prevent any further complications. So again, we really hope you like this video. We hope it's informative and we really tried to keep it short. So if there's anything you missed, just watch it again or look at the um, description and I've tried to put most of this information, maybe not in all the details, but I've put it all in point form in the description of the video. So hope you like this video. Thanks.